Hello, this is Mark from Productive Computing. Thanks for joining me on this video. Today we are talking about barcode add-ons. If you haven't already checked out our original video on this, we explain exactly how the barcode add-on works, how to incorporate it with your own data on a layout in FileMaker, and all of that works well one by one. In this particular video, we're going to talk about extending the barcode functionality to populate data in mass through a script. So for this lesson, I thought we'd start with a brand new FileMaker file so that we can use this as a testing ground for creating a fake or a sample or a temporary inventory database. So I'm going to actually call this inventory and I'll put that on my desktop. Now let's just suppose my inventory all has a barcode serial number and I want to create a barcode image for each piece of inventory so that I might be able to print this perhaps on a label or on a pick sheet or a report or some form of capability so that I can scan these later at some point. All right, so the first field I need is the actual barcode string. And I'm going to leave that text. This is really important to leave this as text versus number because the barcode add-on uh, and add-ons in general are more friendly to text-based fields versus number-based fields. So I'll create that. And then the next field I'll need is the barcode image. And that will be in the form of a container because that's how FileMaker stores images. It uses a container. So barcode string, barcode image, and that's it for the fields I need. Now let's populate this with 5,000 records. So to do that, I'm going to create a new script. So scripts, script workspace, click new. I'll call this 5K records. Well, I'll be even more descriptive. Create 5K records. And then for this, I'm going to need a loop and I'm going to need a new record. And then I'm going to need a quick exit loop if the get found count. So I'm using the found count function and I'm counting it each time a new record is created. And when it reaches 5,000, it's going to exit the loop. So I can perform that right now without hesitation. I'll run that. And in about two seconds, I created 5,000 records here in FileMaker. Now we need to give these a serial number or a unique value. So for that, I'm going to go under records and I can do a replace field contents with serial numbers. Click replace. And now all 5,000 records have a unique ID of some form or another. Now I could get fancy and say, well, I want a longer string and I want it to be a little bit more randomized rather than just a contiguous string of serial numbers. All right, so I'll show you how to do that. It might be a point of interest here. So I'll go to records, replace field contents, and I'll replace this time with a calculated result. And I'll take advantage of a couple of functions here in a row. First, the substitute function, and then the random function. The random function generates a random number. It's less than one. It's some percentage of one. And so it'll be like dot one one seven five five two seven four three or dot three two one five four. Um, and I don't want the dot. So I want to have the substitute look for the dot and replace it with an empty string, which is two quotes here. So what I'll end up with is a very long number with no decimal point. And that makes for a very interesting and juicy barcode. So I'll do that and I'll replace that. Now I have a much bigger number, which is also unique and randomized and something just more representative of what a barcode really might be in the wild. All right. So now we've got some good sample data here and it didn't take us too long to create that. So now I'll go into layout mode and we'll need to create our add-on. So by default, it goes to this fields tab, but you want to click on the add-ons tab and then click on the plus button here at the bottom left and then select this JavaScript add-on called barcode generator. I'll choose that and I'll bring the barcode generator over and I'll make it a little wider here. And we'll put that on our layout and I'll go back to browse mode. And now to configure this, it's really one of the easiest add-ons to configure. You simply click on the configure button and pick the string for the source. That's the actual barcode number, the one that we just populated. And then we have the image itself, which is the area that we're going to store the image for the actual barcode. So I'll click save there. 
and that's it. To test it, I just click here, and voila, I've got a barcode for that serial number. And it's a nice healthy one too, by the way. All right, so that's looking really good. Now you might be saying to yourself, great, I can do all that. That was pretty straightforward. Show me how to populate all 5,000 records here without having to click each one at a time like I'm doing now. So if you go back and watch that original video, you learned that in order to trigger this through a script, you need to grab the UUID, insert that as a script parameter, call a certain script, and you'll be able to populate this using a button or a script trigger. So let's do that now, and we'll go to the next step here. So I'll go to layout mode, double click this web viewer, and grab the UUID, also known as the add-on UUID. I'll copy that to my clipboard. And go back into browse mode and then I'll go to scripts script workspace and we'll create another new script called populate and the script that we need to perform this is the part you want to really pay attention to it's called barcode generator trigger generate as configured that's this one here and you'll see it in the subsection called Barcode Generator API. It's this script right here. And when we trigger that script, we have to put in as the optional script parameter the UUID or the add-on UUID. So I'll do that now. All right, let's put this to a quick test. Close that and go and create a new button here on my layout. And we'll quickly assign that button to the script we just created called Populate. And we'll call the button Populate. Go to browse mode and test. Sure enough, it works. And that's pretty much where the last video left off in terms of final functionality. So how do we do this in mass? So my instincts would say, all I need to do is loop this and go to the next record. You know, perform it, go to the next record, perform it, go to the next record, perform it, go to the next record. So let's do that. Let's set that up real quickly. Now I'm going to tell you right now, spoiler alert, this won't work that way. Um, but we'll do it anyway, just so we can run it through debugger. I think it's worthwhile talking about just for a moment. This might help you with other add-ons that you work with. So let's see, go to the next record and, you know, continue. So there's the loop. Now we do need to exit this loop. So I suppose we could exit after the last one record that it finds. All right. So I'm going to now put the debugger on here. I'll just start with record 14, which is currently... Uh, without a barcode image and I'll run debugger so there's debugger and I'll click the populate script or I could click the button I suppose but I'll just do this here all right and our loop begins and I'll step through this or I should say I will step into it using f6 and the first thing it's going to do is perform the script which then goes and attempts to populate this which we saw, by the way, just worked when we had it as a button. But note that it didn't work here. It's already gone on to the next record, which is now we're on record 15 instead of 14. But if we go back to 14, it's not populated. Why is that? Well, the reason for that is because it has to do with the timing and the way that the JavaScript triggers the script back to FileMaker here. The easiest way I can explain this is that this populate script has to complete in order for this JavaScript to continue. So as soon as I hit the end loop here, it's going to go here again. And but it never populated the image. It never got to that point where the image was populated. And it won't get to that point until this entire script, all 5000 records are done. So if you are an advanced developer and you want to take advantage of the possibility of doing this in a single script, you might be able to get away with changing or manipulating the HTML in this actual add-on and taking advantage of this thing here, which is how to handle the current script when starting new scripts. And that's really what we're talking about you might be able to deploy this option here called FileMaker Perform Script with Option and use potentially number five. What number five does is a currently running FileMaker script, which is the one we're looping, is suspended 
and the script is run. And when they say the script, I think they're talking about the JavaScript from the add-on. And then when that script is completed, the suspended script resumes with the next script step. This is the same behavior as FileMaker.perform script in version 19. Well, I don't have version 19 installed. I've actually got version 19.3.2. So this behavior is different now. So I think if you were to do that, you might be able to get away with that. But that turns out to be something that is fairly complicated. And I ran out of time, actually, before doing this video to do that. But I'll just show you where I got started with it if you are wanting to go down that road. So I'll create a new layout here. And I'll just call it uh, temp. And I'll base that on the barcode generator table occurrence and put you into form view here. And then expose this field here. You're going to love this. Here's the HTML field, which is the meat and potatoes of the, the add-on. And I'll even put a scroll wheel here. I'll put a scroll, scroll bar so we can see what's going on here. So here's the HTML. You could say that this, these are the root components of the add-on. And in a couple of places here, uh, I put the word FileMaker, and we're going to find FileMaker. And in particular, we're looking for where this HTML calls the FileMaker script, the callback to FileMaker. And here's one of them. You see this? It says FileMaker performs script, and then it performs all of this stuff. This is all JavaScript programming within the HTML. Uh, right now, it's really not that human readable, and I don't think it ever was meant to be, but these are the underlying components of the add-on. So I think perhaps if you change this to perform script with option and then add those parameters there. And that's not the only one. There's another one here. And I haven't really taken the time to figure out which one is important. This one is perform script as well here. And this one, that's not a script. That's not a script. And then we repeat back to the beginning. So there's two areas here that I it looks to be performing the script callback back to FileMaker. You could potentially go down that road and see where it gets you. Uh, I've been at this a couple hours and I just don't know enough about JavaScript to, and this is not exactly readable uh, from a programmatic standpoint. This is really not meant for human consumption, really. Um, and that's, you know, that's one of the disadvantages of these add-ons is that um, they get you to a point, but when you have to do something a small tweak like this and the way that the script is called back, uh, you may be dealing with, with looking at all that. But there is a workaround, and that's really the primary purpose of this video. It's not exactly elegant, but it does get the job done, and it will get you by if you do want to take advantage of the unique opportunities that these add-ons do afford you. Um, let's go ahead and show you my workaround. So I'll go into the script maker here. This was just a trick I thought of, and I, and I wanted to see if it worked, and sure enough, it does. So forget the whole loop thing, okay? And forget all that. Let's just say that this is a script that's going to stand on its own. We already know it works from a button. So why not trigger this from another script, but trigger it in a way where I'm not going to be bound to a script? And to do that, I will create a new script called Trigger, and we will use a very unique and important install on timer script. It'll trigger the script independently or asynchronously, if you will. So the script I want to trigger is, of course, the populate script. And how often do I want to trigger that? Let's trigger it every one second. So if I trigger this script every second, it will populate that particular barcode. Now, you might say to yourself, well, that's great. You're going to, you're going to trigger that script, and it's going to populate. And how is this script going to know to go to another record? And, you know, how is that going to work exactly? So the way to get around that, we can not introduce a loop. We already know that because the loop will tie this up. We need this to sort of perform on its own. Uh, we don't really want any script steps after it. We want to just perform this and have this be the last script step, if you will. But we can perform script steps before this, actually. So let's go ahead and move this down like so. 
And let's use a technique where we're going to do a find for anything that doesn't have an image yet. And then find the, anything that's blank, populate it. Find the blanks, populate it. Find the blanks, populate it. And that will be a form of looping without actually doing a loop. Again, all being triggered from this trigger that runs every second. So let's try that. Now, in order to determine if the image is populated or not, I'm going to create another quick field here. And I'll call that image exists. And I'll make that a calculation. And I'll create that field with a function called length. I use this function all the time for all kinds of things. And you want to just point that length to the image itself. So that's the barcode image. This will determine the length in bytes of that image. In other words, if it's empty, there is no image. If there's anything, then there is an image. So now we have a, an image exists field. Let me put that over here, maybe right below the image, like so. Of course, it'll just be a length of that. So let me find one that has an image. There we go. So we can see that there is data here because there's an image. So now, because I have this field, going back to my script, I can do a perform find. And I'll specify the find request, find records, where the image exists is equal to or blank. And once it does that find, it'll perform and populate it. Then when it's triggered again, it'll find empty and then populate it. Now, if it comes to the end where all of them are populated, we can stop all trigger processes and all scripts. So to do that, we'll say if current found count equals zero, then we'll install the on timer script step and set it to blank, really literally set it to nothing. And this will clear all existing timer scripts and it'll halt the one that we triggered over here. And that's all there is to it. So if it doesn't find anything on that very last record, it's populated number 5,000, we look for it, there's no blanks, everything's populated, it'll just get found count as zero, and there it is. Now we can do a quick set error capture on, like so. And I think we're good to go. Uh, let's go back to our trigger. It's gonna trigger this populate script every one second. And let's do one more thing here. In the populate script, we want to kind of see, after it does its find, we want to do a refresh window, just so we can always have a good bird's eye view of what it found, and then it'll run the routine when it gets to that point. All right, shall we begin? I'll go to scripts and click trigger. Okay, 4,983, 82, 81. It's finding less and less unpopulated barcodes with each passing second. And it's populating them with a real image. If we are able to keep pace with one per second, my 5,000 records here, if I divide that by 60, that should tell us how many minutes. That's 83 minutes, divide by 60 again. It's a really just about an hour and a third. So an hour and 20 minutes or so, 25 minutes. And this will be done. So it's not exactly elegant. It's not exactly pretty, but it does take advantage of getting the job done without the pain and frustration of working with that HTML and trying to figure out which calls what on programming that you didn't actually have any part of. Um, and really, it wasn't really meant to be tweaked at that level, I don't think. So hopefully this video helped you if you are in a position where you wanted to populate your inventory or your items with actual barcodes using the barcode add-on. If you find yourself to be an advanced developer and you've actually tweaked what you saw under the hood or you found a better way to do this in mass without using the install on timer script step, please do share it with us and point us in the right direction so we can learn from it. I believe I would have gotten there. I just simply didn't have the hours and hours to spend with it, to tweak it, to be as elegant as possible. As always, thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.